Hello, welcome back. We are still in day five. Uh, in earlier lecture, you understood about VMQs and also batch. Now, with whatever knowledge we have gained till now, let us see one use case, a one-way synchronization use case. I will tell you various scenarios. In various scenarios, how to do synchronization. So based on the scenario, you have to take a decision. We will see that. And also, how we can leverage mule clustering, when to use mule cluster and when not to use mule cluster. So you'll get a very good understanding by the end of this video. Let us see. Okay, let us get started. I have a database and I have a table called as some some table like say customers table assume i want to pull for any new customer and whenever there is a new record i want to update it to salesforce right so whenever a new customer is added i want it to be immediately uploaded to salesforce this is a real time sync okay real time that means immediately almost in real time but there might be a scenario where in some situations I don't want a real time sync. Maybe uh, if it is synced within one day, it will be good or every hour I want to sync. Right. We'll see all the scenarios. First of all, let us try to design one solution for uh, sync between a database and Salesforce. But again, in this, I don't want to take Salesforce into consideration. Just for a demonstration, I want to pull for records in a table in a database and I want to write it to another database. Two databases I'll be having, right? So this is the scenario. So let's assume that this is DB1 and this is DB2. In both databases, I have a table called as product. Whenever a new product is added here, I want it to be updated here. So one solution I would propose like this. So here what you can do is I wrote a flow like this. Let us see. I configured on table row, right? And the connector, if you can see, it is pointing to copy schema. I have a database with the name copy schema where in this product table, I have uh, thousands of records almost i think i have 7000 records here total 7000 are there right so now what i want is i want to sync this to this database so i configured on table row as you know how it works it will pull for new records then actually what this on table row will do is it will actually get all the records where product id greater than the sorry lesser than the sorry, sorry, greater than the given product id initially this product id will be initialized as zero and in the first poll we'll get all the products but let's assume that once it polled in the first poll itself let's say it got seven thousand records okay so here i'll give the polling interval to be a big bigger one right now uh, five seconds I gave, maybe I'll give it as uh, 30 seconds, 30 and I'll give it as seconds. Okay, so after every 30 seconds, this on table row will poll the database, get the records. Now this on table row, if it polls, let's say it got 7000 records. What this on table row will do is it will not give 7000 records to the flow. For each record, it will create one mule event and then kick off the flow. So if there are 7000 records when it polled, it will result in 7000 mule events coming. So flow will be executed 7000 times. For each record, we are doing some transformation and inserting into database. Right. So here you can see I am pointing to mule training db and i'm inserting to product table so right now uh, in my database uh, there is mule training db and in this product table i have uh, i have some records uh, so i will actually clear or truncate this table let this be 
empty okay hey uh, first of all i'll delete the one more table because it's not allowing then i'll truncate product as well okay oh foreign key constants are there okay let it be how many are there right now some six plus three nine are there but in this copy schema product there are seven thousand tables approximately seven thousand rows sorry right so is this a good integration hmm? no right there's on table row first of all say this on table row if i go to advanced um it can start transactions but yeah um so if i go to general this on table row will pull based on the scheduling frequency what if on table row gets all the records um it is actually uh firing 7000 times 7000 mule events so for insert how many times insert will be going to a database 7000 times not a good idea right so this doesn't look good but is it real time yes i can actually configure the scheduling frequency to whatever I want like 30 seconds or even 10 seconds and simulate a real-time sync whenever it uh, row gets added into uh, the first table it will get automatically inserted into second table it's a near it's very real-time sync but let's say I don't want a real-time sync hmm? what I can do is I can configure a scheduler right see this is second solution um, I can configure a scheduler uh maybe uh, for some one hour one and i can configure one hour or one day or whatever it is i can schedule this then for the first time what i want to do is uh, i want to retrieve from the object store you know already how object store works here i am retrieving uh, a key called as last updated time and i am setting it as some date value here if it is default so if there is no key called as last updated time in my object store the default value will be this value right okay and once i retrieve it i am storing it in a variable called as last updated time okay so first time there will be no data in object store it the last updated time will be this one then I am firing a select query which will retrieve uh, based on a column called as offer well rental actually assume that in my product table I have a column to store last updated time so right now the column name is offer valid until but assume that this is a field which contains when the row is last updated right that means whenever it is inserted or updated i want this column to be updated so i'm getting all the products where the last updated time is greater than the poll time and here i'm initializing this last poll time with the variable whatever i retrieved from the object store so for the first time it will get all the records 7000 records as of now then i am using for each and then right now what i'm doing is for for each there is one special feature what i can do is i can configure a batch size so what i could do is i can configure a batch size of say 100 because i'm having 7000 records right so what this for each will do is it will take first 100 elements and give it to the and then execute the components so here this transform message will get a list of 100 records so i am transforming it i'm getting a list of all this and then i am doing a bulk insert here i am doing a bulk insert that means 100 records will be inserted at a time so when i'm doing the bulk insert i have to pass a list of the values whatever i want to pass for the placeholders right so I'm doing a batch or bulk insert. 
so how many times will uh, my flow go to database if there are 7000 records 7000 by 100 70 times right the number of round trips to database is reduced and then what I am doing after processing all the records see again I am using object stores uh, operation store and I am updating the key last updated time as current updated time so after I process all the records I am updating it so looks like performance is good but the thing is how many threads are processing 7000 records here in this case each record is processed synchronously for each right for each will loop through so it will process second record only after first record goes through all this but anyway uh, since we are actually batching so 100 100 records are processed synchronously only so this is one thing and if uh, one insert fails right it will throw an exception and rest of the records are not processed again this is a problem so what i might have to do is i might have to uh, wrap this inside a try catch wrap everything inside for each inside a try try flow try scope and then decide what to do if there is an exception right but don't you think that if you want to process records concurrently using batch is good yes so let me show you one more solution using batch so here you can see what i'm doing again uh, again it, it looks like similar i'm retrieving the records 7000 records and then passing it to the batch job right in the batch job i have only one step where i am transforming the records and then here in this i have a batch aggregator maybe i can give an aggregator size of say 100 right here what will happen it will it will aggregate up to 100 and in batch job you have here batch block size as 100 so what will happen in batch if you know the batch so in batch what will happen there are three phases right if you actually don't know how batch works you can see uh, one of my video given in the appendix at the last section okay so i'll just briefly give you here in batch normally what happens there will be three phases right load and dispatch phase load and dispatch phase what it will do it will populate a queue with all the records right and multiple threads will actually fetch the records and then execute the steps right but whenever one thread is picking up from the queue it will pick a batch of block size given so in this case i gave my block size as 100 a thread will pick 100 records and then that same thread will execute the steps given right so if there are 7000 records maybe it is possible i can configure maybe it's it's possible to uh, configure thread pool as well by default batch will use uh, 16 threads that means uh, uh, number uh, 2 into number of cores right if you have an octa core processor 16 threads by default bad job uses 16 threads it is possible that we can configure more as well right so so here one thread will pick a block of 100 so if there are 7000 so it is possible that 16 threads will pick by default 16 threads each thread will pick 100 records 
right so 16 threads will process the records concurrently right each thread will take 100 records and then execute step one step step one uh, step two step three like that right so in this case uh, so I am achieving more concurrency than for loop and one more thing is here if some records fail I don't need to handle right I just have to configure what are the maximum number of fail records so I'll configure 50 so until 50 records fail the batch job will continue if more than 50 records are failing then the batch job will fail so in this case I am taking the advantage of a batch job so instead of using a simple for each where you need to manually handle failures you need to manually handle concurrency and all you can just leverage batch job it looks sense it makes sense so in the on complete what I am doing again I am storing the last updated time as the current time this looks good but again here all these are executing on a single machine right so suppose if I am deploying this application on a cluster let's assume that I have an on-premise servers and let's assume that I decided to deploy this application on a cluster of three nodes right so um, let's assume that the scheduler we can configure scheduler where it should execute uh, I can configure it to be executed only on primary node by default it executes only on a primary node in this cluster of three nodes one will be made as primary and scheduler will execute only on the primary node so on the primary node it will retrieve and the whole batch job everything will get processed on the primary node itself so I am seeing concurrency only in one machine right I am not leveraging the cluster so what I can do is if I have a cluster what I can do is I can make my flow which is getting the records to push all the records into a VM queue and the VM queue will be in a distributed shared memory of the cluster so first flow will push all this and in the application I can have second flow which will pull for messages and then execute the batch job so let us see here I have the solution for this as well here using VMs so if you see this what I am doing hey I think here I need to add the VM module uh, VM module I'll add yeah so now here you can see there are two flows first flow um, I can configure a scheduler but right now I configured a HTTP listener so that I can kick off the flow whenever I want so here instead of scheduler I configured it you could use a scheduler as well whenever I give a get request to slash start what it is doing here I am checking in the object store as usual and I'm firing the query which will retrieve all the records and in the for each I'm publishing this is a VM queue so here I have configured a VM connector and uh, here I have configured only one queue with name products queue and I made the queue type as persistent so if I make a queue as persistent it will be stored in Hazelcast distributed shared memory so here what I am doing I am looping through each record and publishing it to a VM queue once all the records are published to VMQ, what I am doing is I am here, I am using the object store connector to store the last updated time. That's over. Now, in the second flow here, I am having a VM listener with four consumers by default polling to a queue. Products queue here, same thing, right? And then kicking off the batch job right so here what I am doing one more thing here is in this for each loop what I could do is I could configure a batch size of 200 that means 
while I am publishing to a VMQ, I will be publishing 200 records as one object, or as one mule message, right? So, 200 records are published to the VMQ. It is received here. With that 200 records, I am scheduling a batch job, right? So, in this case, what will happen? If the primary node is having a scheduler, suppose, this will retrieve all 4000 records and push all the 4000, 7000 records to the queue. Then second flow in all the other machines of the cluster, nodes of the cluster, they will receive. And now my batch jobs are executed on all the nodes of the cluster. So this is a best solution, right? It is it reliable also if I am using queues? Yes, the first flow what it is doing once it re retrieves all the records it is pushing to the persistent vm queues so even if my mule runtimes crash there is no problem right suppose while executing one of the nodes of the cluster goes down it's okay right there are two nodes which will process the records present here right so thus this solution looks to be more reliable and more better in uh, performance also right so this is the scenario right now um, hope you got all the information to uh, document the process view so i told you that we'll be designing a solution right so we have to look at various possibilities with whatever knowledge we have and we need to document the process view. So your company might be using various documentation methods. I'm not discussing about the documentation method. So once as an architect, if you understand how, what all features you will provide, like whatever I have discussed till now, you'll be able to take a decision. Right, that's what an architect should do. Right, so you can document your process view by uh, by taking all these situations, scenarios. You have you can achieve same problem for same problem. I have various solutions proposed. So based on your scenario, you have to decide uh, which is good. So do you propose this solution, the last solution, if you are deploying this application on cloud hub it will be costly actually if you are pushing this on cloud hub so again unnecessary uh, network uh, network uh, traffic will be generated if you are deploying so this the last solution of clustering and uh, publishing to vm queues will work only if it is on premise if you are going with maybe a cloud hub you can evaluate this solution itself where one cloud of worker can process it. You have to analyze. So you might be having various SLAs. You have to test the scenarios, how it is performing and take a decision, right? So that's all, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.